Motor Galaxy Book Ion has just gotten its Windows 11 update a month ago. And for Windows 11, Samsung has customized its software a little bit to its capabilities for its Galaxy Book lineup. And today we'll be discussing on what's new on One UI Book 4, which is Samsung's Windows 11 version, and whether you should get a Galaxy Book Ion in 2022. So let's start off with Windows 11 in general. Right off the bat, you would notice that all the edges and all the app icons has been curved out and also the start menu has also been shifted to the middle basically the taskbar has been shifted to the center but you can change this back to the old layout in windows 10 where everything's on the left using taskbar settings so basically just go to taskbar settings and scroll all the way down and then you'll see this option over here expand taskbar behaviors and over here you could see a option for the taskbar alignment click on it and change it to the left and then you have your windows 10 layout back do remember that you can change the settings anytime back if you want so just play around and see which one works better for you the next new feature is windows snapping and i find this something that i use rather often you know how you can do split screen on your galaxy tabs now you can do that with your galaxy books as well it's basically just like the galaxy tabs you can just do split screen on your apps and that's about it but it's something that is very useful especially when you have a larger screen the split screen options on Windows 11 is highly customizable and it's also quite easy to launch. And on Windows 11, you can add a split screen shortcut to your taskbar. Another feature of Windows 11 is that it's now easier to switch desktop. Previously, you had to double finger to swipe your trackpad and you still can do that but now there's a dedicated button on your taskbar. Next is the focus assist. Press the Windows key as well as N to activate it. Focus Assist is a feature available on Windows 11 that allows you to suppress all your notifications to avoid interruptions. And I'm someone who gets distracted very easily, so I use this feature quite often actually. This was actually available on Windows 10, but on Windows 11, you can choose whether you want to set it to alarms only or priority only, or you can customize it even more greatly. Let's move on to the features on the Galaxy Book Ion. So first, the function key and F11 activates wireless power share, which is Samsung's reverse wireless charging, which occupies the trackpad. You can charge your phone or your devices that supports wireless charging. For example, your Galaxy Watch or Galaxy Buds works as well. But note that the wireless charging is kept at 5 watts, which is really slow. But sometimes when you need extra juice, this will do the job. Do remember that this will render your trackpad useless. So you'll need to bring an external mouse if you want to use this device while charging your phone. The next feature is Samsung's Quick Share. It's just like Apple's AirDrop, but I use this on a day-to-day -day basis and I use this a lot more than I anticipated to. This feature is exclusive to Galaxy Books and from your Galaxy Book, you can send it to your phone or any other Galaxy devices. The seamless connectivity with Galaxy Buds is also a feature that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. When I open my Galaxy Buds case, it will connect automatically to my Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, but then there will be a pop-up window and I can choose to connect it from my Galaxy Book by pressing connect. After connecting, your battery percentage will be shown. Your Galaxy Buds will connect to the last connected device, but you can always connect it back to your Galaxy phone or your Galaxy tab, as a pop-up notification will appear on your phone for example and you can just press connect on your phone and you'll automatically connect back to your phone. Exclusive to One UI Book 4, Samsung apps have a more consistent theme. For example, Samsung Notes, it looks just like my Galaxy Tab. Previously, on Windows 10 with One UI Book 4, the Samsung Notes apps look slightly different as its menus and icons are all over the place. However, with One UI Book 4, Samsung Notes looks so familiar it looks just like the user interface of my Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. This new interface makes it a lot easier for me as I don't need to relearn to use Samsung Notes as that's my main note taking app and previously, I would need to spend extra time navigating around the app on Windows compared to my phone and my Galaxy Tab. Across all Galaxy devices, Samsung Notes will sync automatically when you turn it on in the settings. So every time when you open Samsung Notes, it will sync so everything across your Galaxy phone, your Galaxy Tab, as well as your Galaxy Book 
all the Samsung Notes will be updated and they'll share the same thing. I really have to give credit to Samsung Notes as it is the best note taking app I've ever used. It's better than any other app I've used across iOS and Android and as well as Windows. I would make a dedicated video on Samsung Notes soon as it's perfect for students like me. Samsung DeX is also a good feature as you can project your phone on your Galaxy Book. Once you start casting, do note that your phone is the one that's powering whatever you see on your Galaxy Book in the Samsung DeX app. And I don't really use this that often because most of the time I'll just need to transfer files and you can use Samsung DeX to transfer files to your Galaxy Book. But for me, I'd rather use Quick Share and this is more of managing your phone on a bigger screen. But I have my Galaxy Tab for that, so I won't be using this feature. You do see the reflections of my Nano Leaf panels, and you can control them with Samsung's SmartThings app, which is available on Windows as well. And from here, one feature that I like is just SmartThings itself. I can track my phone, or I can just turn off my light like this without ever needing to use my phone or shout out comments like, Hey Bixby, turn off Nano Leaf. Samsung DeX allows you to use your Galaxy phone to project on your Galaxy Book. If you have a Galaxy Tab, you can use your Galaxy Tab as a second screen using second screen on the notification panel. When using this feature, your Galaxy Tab will have an option for you to choose between lower latency as well as faster performance. I think both are about the same, so just go with any, it wouldn't really make much of a difference. And on your Galaxy Book, you can choose multiple options on what the second screen can do. For example, you can choose your Galaxy Book to project the screen of your Galaxy Book, which is just like duplicate, and whatever you do on your Galaxy Book will be replicated on your Galaxy Tab. The feature that I use more often is extending the screen. So this is like another monitor. Your Galaxy Tab is basically a monitor, basically extending your workspace. This is a lot better for productivity. For example, if you're a video editor, you can drop your video editing things onto your Galaxy Tab screen while having your full screen on your Galaxy Book. I think we have covered pretty much of all the, the main features of Galaxy Books as well as One UI Book 4. So let's move on to why I think the Galaxy Book Ion is still a good buy in 2021. So this a uh, laptop is about one year old and its battery life it's still good it uh, lasts me the full day with about 45 percent left to spare on average but i'm not a very heavy user so i can't speak for everyone the ports here are sufficient there is a usb type c a headphone jack a hdmi as well as a sd card slot which allows for storage expansion up to one terabyte and two usb a ports the trackpad here is huge it covers about half, actually about 40% on the vertical axis and it's very precise. Also, the screen of Galaxy Books is amazing. I'm not too surprised that Samsung is pretty consistent and they are the best at making displays. I have to thank this build because a 15.6 inch laptop is normally very heavy. Not this one as made with a magnesium alloy which sometimes might feel like plastic but it's actually magnesium metal. It weighs about 1 kilo which is very light for this size. And its build also looks very sleek and you can also open the Galaxy Book one handed without any issues. Also I like the placement of the fingerprint sensor, it's just about right. The keys are large and they are quite nice to type for a membrane keyboard and the bezels are slim, so all in all this is a very well built laptop, although I will recommend you waiting for Samsung's 2022 laptops as the chipset might have a much powerful performance and by the way this is the i310 gen chipset so it's not that powerful but my needs for a student does not require an i7 or i5 so I'm good with this. My biggest caveat with the Galaxy Book Ion is that it lacks a touch screen and to me I think I would prefer a touch screen so I should have gotten the Galaxy Book S or even the Galaxy Book Pro 360 if I want the touch screen as well as the ability to use a S Pen. For now, this suits my needs and I'll stick with it for the next few years to come. Also do let me know down in the comments what content you would like to see. Is it about Galaxy Tabs or Galaxy Books? Just let me know. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.